Exactly one year ago, we purchased these two nearly identical Tesla Model 3s as a kind of experiment meant to host these cars on the car sharing network Turo. This one cost us $58,500, and this one cost us $41,500. And in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the financials and explaining exactly how these two vehicles combined made us a total of $45,000 last year. If you're new here, I'm Ryan. I run The Kilowatts, a YouTube channel that reviews electric cars and a group that hosts electric vehicles on Turo. So far, most of the 10 electric vehicles we have are Tesla's Model 3s and Ys. And that's simply because we found those to be the easiest to manage. They've got the you know, phone key and key card and the user interface is just so straightforward that for the most part, our renters just hop in and, and go. We've experimented with other electric vehicles like Ford's Mustang Mach-E and that was a great electric vehicle, but not quite as easy to host on Turo. And we're currently experimenting with Tesla's Model S. You know, with that yoke and with the key card, it might be just as good, but We'll find out soon. For now, this video is gonna be focused mostly on these two vehicles, the Tesla Model 3s, and how they did financially last year. So what did we buy? Well, after several years of hosting electric vehicles on Turo, we found it difficult to know what makes a renter more willing to pay up for a more expensive vehicle or book a longer versus a shorter trip. And we wanted to see if the price of the vehicle was a factor. So we purchased this $58,500 Tesla Model 3. It's the long range all wheel drive and we paid the additional $10,000 for the full self-driving package. At the same time, we listed this $41,500 rear-wheel drive Model 3 with a standard range battery. The goal was to see how these two cars compare over the course of a year, and would the more expensive vehicle rent out better than the less expensive vehicle. And just for your reference, we call the more expensive one Forest, and the less expensive one Flow. Over the last year, each of these vehicles acquired an almost identical 35,000 miles. The average rental length did vary slightly with Flow averaging 3.3 days and Forest averaging 4.3 days. The average price per day that Forest acquired was $135, where Flow was just slightly cheaper at $118. Overall, in terms of utilization, Forest was utilized 185 days last year and Flow was 190, but really the number you came here for was how much each car made. Forest made $22,500, and Flow made just under that at $22,000, almost identical. Now, we got incredibly lucky with when we timed the purchase of these vehicles. We actually got free supercharging for a year, and we were able to look back and get the exact value of that free supercharging per vehicle. So in total, it was roughly $6,600, but Forest got $3,584.87 of free supercharging, and Flow got $3,000. $64.99 of free supercharging. So over the course of a year and roughly 35,000 miles, it's not been all sunshine and rainbows. You obviously have to consider your time investment and the fact that you are likely going to experience some wear and tear. We've experienced a lot of rim rash with these Teslas. I think it's extremely common to curb the wheels and so we get that repaired roughly once every six months. We've had uh, a little bit of other damage, a cracked windshield as well as two minor dents, but. Fortunately, these two vehicles haven't sustained any significant damage. It's important to consider, however, that there's always the possibility that your car will experience more significant damage, like we recently experienced with one of our Tesla Model Ys, where one of our renters hit a deer and that car has now been out of service for almost an entire month. So in conclusion, it seems like our renters aren't willing to pay up for the more expensive model. They really just wanna get behind the wheel of a Tesla, and so going forward, we're probably gonna be buying more of the cheaper models that we can get. As it relates to the full self-driving package though, it's still a bit of an open question. As you may know, the price of full self-driving is set to go up next week, so we could pay the $10,000 to upgrade this now or the $12,000 in the future. And If you're looking at the long play, there might be some value there and it's something we should consider. I'm curious what your thoughts are, so let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.